beneath the sea. The Naval Academy Museum presents a history of the Navy in 100 objects. Ever since the CSS Hunley during the Civil War, and even prior, U.S. efforts with submarines have been fraught with danger. The widespread use of submarines that came about with World War I improved submarine capabilities, but one fundamental problem remained. Of course, uh, with submarines, uh, one of the things you have to think about is the tremendously dangerous uh, going down. People don't belong under the water, one might argue. Um, and submarines do get into trouble on occasion. We've had a number of submarines go down. During the uh, Cold War, there was, uh, uh, we lost two nuclear submarines, uh, the Scorpion and the Thresher. And the, uh, the other, but earlier submarine uh, rescue attempts were, were kind of interesting. Uh, the, uh, one of the things you had to try to do is figure out a way to get people from a submarine on the bottom, rescue them, get them out of there. And that's where a guy named Momsen came along and created the Momsen Lung um, that allowed uh, the sailors to don this thing and would give them enough uh, air and so forth to get them to the surface. Uh, this was a great breakthrough for submarine rescue and, and uh, had a lot to do with some, some sailors surviving uh, when submarines did in fact run into trouble. Um, one of the interesting things about submarine rescue too is that Ernie King, uh, who is of course uh, most people know as the, the, the CNO, the Chief of Naval Operations during World War II, tremendously important uh, strategist and had a great deal of effect on the way the war was fought. Um, he was Part of his career was made on the fact that he conducted the submarine rescue. He's one of the early pioneers in that. Now, in that particular case, they were actually more of a salvage operation than a rescue. They tried to rescue and were not uh, capable of doing it at the time. But that's one of the things that led to these breakthroughs that ultimately, like the moms in the lung, which, which improved that situation. This past weekend, the Naval Academy football team defeated the U.S. Military Academy in the classic football matchup, the Army-Navy game, with a dominating win over Army. This was the midshipmen's 12th straight victory over the Army cadets. The Army-Navy football matchup began in 1890, just as the U.S. Navy was building its first fleet of modern battleships. And playing Navy football is an experience that has been shared by many well-known Naval Academy graduates. In 1916, Young Charles Momsen arrived at the academy for his plebe year, joining the football and baseball teams. In 1918, during World War I, Momsen gained exposure as a midshipman to submarines while serving on a battleship escorting merchant vessels across the Atlantic. After his initial service in battleships, Momsen would go on to train as a submarine officer and commanded three submarines from 1923 to 1927 before being assigned to the Bureau of Construction and Repair. In 1925, the USS S-4 was accidentally rammed by a Coast Guard vessel off of Massachusetts and sunk to the bottom. There were survivors, but inadequate technology and poor weather prevented divers from reaching the sailors trapped inside, all of whom perished. This incident inspired Momsen to go to work developing underwater rescue equipment and he would go on to develop two key inventions, a modified submarine rescue diving bell to transport sailors from sunken submarines to the surface, and the Momsen lung, our object today. This time we're looking at a rescue apparatus, uh, which we see here in this case. Uh, this is to help sailors escape from a sunken submarine. Now submarines are guaranteed to go down and most of the time they come back up. But on those rare occasions when they go to the bottom and the sailors are trapped, they need some way to get free from the submarine. Uh, an incident occurred when the USS S-4, a submarine similar to the S-2, which we see down here, uh, was rammed by a Coast Guard vessel and sank in Long Island Sound. Uh, the sailors were trapped there all were lost, the weather interfered, they could not get freed. Uh, the submarine was not rescued until three months later. A young naval officer by the name of Charles Momsen analyzed the problem and came up with a device, a rescue lung, which 
sailors on submarines could use to help get out of a submarine and reach the surface. Uh, we see that uh, here, it's just uh, basically an airbag uh, that you can breathe into and help you escape. Uh, later on, uh, more elaborate devices would be made. Uh, the diving bell uh, by uh, an officer named McCann uh, was used to help rescue uh, sailors uh, from the squealus, which... 20 years after his academy football career was over, Momsen and his experimental diving unit received a frantic call on May 23, 1939. USS Squalus, SS-192, had suffered a catastrophic valve failure during a test dive off of Long Island. The partially flooded submarine had plummeted to the bottom of the ocean in 240 feet of water and now lay with 32 crew members and one civilian trapped in the forward section. Rescue operations began the next day. Over the course of the rescue operations, all 33 surviving members were brought to the surface alive using the McCann Rescue Chamber, inspired and mostly developed by Charles Momsen. Some years later, eight members of the USS Tang would use Momsen's lung device to escape from their sunken submarine in the Pacific and swim to the surface. The ocean.